Well, from Glacier National Park to Great Falls, Montana, we're traveling today. We left the Apgar campground this morning, probably like five. And now let's see what time it is. 9.30. So we've been traveling for several hours. We are going to be doing a long haul today, probably about 10 to 12 hours. We are heading back east, out of the mountains, heading back to Missouri. Got to be back to Missouri by September 8th for a special event plan that I'm not going to tell anybody about. You're just going to have to wait and see. So what we're going to try to do now is we're going to keep heading east. We're going to go through Montana, down into Wyoming. We're going to go to Devil's Tower, and then we're going to go to Mount Rushmore, and then uh, Badlands, and then a stop in Iowa to get my slides fixed, and then down to Missouri after that. So we've got a lot planned in the next two weeks. So a few tips for me finding a gas station. I still use my Gas Buddy app. In order for me to actually see if the gas station will work, I have to pull up Google Maps. Today, what I did was I got lucky, happened to drive past the gas station, seen another Class A sitting here, and I thought, that's the one for me. So I whipped in really quickly, and now we're fueling up. I am taking everybody's advice. Like, I'm almost at uh, $80, $90 now, so if this does shut off at 100 bucks, I'm going to restart it and pump another 100 bucks into it because I was getting pretty close to empty. Yeah, so it shut off at 95 bucks. Got it going again. Gonna try to let it fill up. And that's that. I forgot to put my rock guard on, so I'm gonna do that really quickly. Got the second round filled up. It was about, I think, 90 bucks is what it was. So, all in all, I think I put a little over 60 some gallons in which kind of confuses me because I was, I was less than a quarter tank and this thing holds 90 gallons of fuel. So does that mean I had 20 some gallons left? Possibly. But anyway, I don't know how the gauges are set to work like that, but also I've got two of the most non-aerodynamic vehicles on the face of the planet, Class A Motorhome and the Jeep. And both of them have got cracked windshields currently the Jeeps is getting worse. I don't know if you can see it very well. It's starting to come over this way. So before long, it's gonna start, who knows, working its way over on the driver's side. And I had a lot of people say, because I mentioned this in a previous video, well, why don't, you know, your insurance company will pay for it. Well, actually they won't. The insurance company that I have is a state mutual company and they don't have glass coverage. It just goes in with your comprehensive coverage and I've got a higher comprehensive coverage than what it would cost to then to replace the glass. So I'm gonna be eating that out of pocket, which is fine. Now on the motorhome, on this one, right up here is where it's at. It's getting worse. It's starting to inch its way up this way. And I really have no idea what that's gonna cost. Um, it's a big piece of glass. So I don't know if it's gonna be a thousand bucks. If anybody's ever replaced one of those, knows where to get them replaced at, let me know because I have no idea. I haven't even done any research on it yet. Uh, this community that we have is great. We have a lot of seasoned RVers who know way more about this lifestyle than what we do. And so a lot of you guys comment on our channel and we love that. So if you guys have any suggestions on where to get this replaced at, let me know in the comments below. I feel like singing a, a little, the devil went down to Georgia. He was looking for a soul to steal. He was in a bag. He was way behind. He was willing to make a deal. When he Fire came across this run, young boys, run. <laughs> Dude, you don't The devil tower is on the house of the rising sun. Chicken out, bread back, chicken out, go out. Hey, so we made it. Like 11 hours later, we just, let's see, 11 hours later, Layla got something stuck in her nose. Didn't get that on film. Metal. A piece of metal. A piece of metal. She stuck up her nose and it was bleeding. Very bad. Other than that, it was a very easy day. Stopped once for gas. 
Didn't stop at all for food. Mommy made pizza. Oh, we didn't get our badges. Kept the coffee hot. Did we Kept get the coffee hot. The badges? Oh, we didn't do our glacier. Badges. We did not do glacier national park badges for the kids. Bummer. We did not complete our stuff. So. Wait, do we still get to do it though? That happens. Okay, guys. See these mounds in the ground? Okay, I see prairie dogs right now. Look. You're Let's go see them. prairie dogs. I see them. Sam, there's tons of them. It is here the black-tailed prairie dogs make their home. They're called black-tailed prairie dogs. Cool. cool. So this is prairie dog town. Well, good morning everybody. I guess it's actually good afternoon here. We are all loaded up, getting ready to head up to Devil's Tower. See it right back there in the background. So a couple things going on today that I just want to tell you guys about. Number one, the generator started for about 20 minutes this morning or less than that, and then just shut off. Now it won't restart. And so I don't know what's going on. I called a Onan RV dealer. It's an, it's an RV shop, but they also specialize in Onan. He can't get me in for two weeks. He did kind of troubleshoot with me. He thought it had something to do with um, low battery voltage, but I've had the coach running for maybe 30 minutes now and then tried to restart it and it's not, it still won't start. So I don't know what's going on. So that's something we're gonna have to look at. And so we're gonna go up here to Devil's Tower. We're gonna check it out. Then we're gonna get on the road, head to Rapid City. We're gonna check out Mount Rushmore. We're gonna stay down there for maybe a couple days and then just keep on going east. So come along with us. Hopefully today is a another amazing day for LPO6. I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get him. I'm gonna get him. <laughs> oh, say peace. So we stayed inside the campground here. It's a nice little campground. Nice little flat spot with these great big, I think they're cottonwood trees. Very pretty area. They got several pull through sites. I believe there is water here somewhere, although I don't know where it's at. Uh, dump station, I'm not quite even sure about that. I think there is one. But if you need full hookups, there's a KOA. In fact, I don't know if you can see down there, there's some red roof buildings. Uh, there's a KOA down there. So if you need or want full hookups, you got that really close too. But here is only 20 bucks a night. We're cheapos, especially with all the things I've had to get fixed and still need to get fixed so the adventure continues when you hear your husband say oh, oh what does that mean i just figured out what the problem was and we don't have a generator problem we have a low fuel problem what's a low fuel problem i had forgotten that the generator will just automatically shut off once it reaches uh, to the yellow line on the fuel tank or on the fuel gauge. And that's what happened. And I sat down and I looked at our fuel gauge and light bulb went off. Ding! That that's why it won't start. So we don't have a problem. All those phone calls I made this morning trying to get an appointment in, I would have looked really stupid <laughs> going into the shop and they'd been like, Oh my uh, goodness. You just don't have enough fuel in there. <laughs> Oh well, so, hey, that's... Michael hasn't had his pink drink yet today. <laughs> hey, that's a relief though, so we yeah, can... Yeah, praise God. Get on down the road without having to worry about our generator. Yeah. What? What do you want? Moo, moo, moo. Moo, moo. Moo, moo. That's our life. If you're bringing your RV up here, good luck. There's a little strip uh, right along the road for RV parking. It's not super long, but when I came through and you have to do the loop and then kind of face like you're going back out and go back out the road. But when I came through, there was nothing large enough for me. But when I did the loop, apparently somebody had left and I just, I took the only spot. You guys want to hear a cool story about Devil's Tower? Yeah. 
I don't know what year, but back maybe 30s or 40s, there was this guy named George. He parachuted out of an airplane and landed on the very top of Devil's Tower. Well, that's the best way to get there. And he had a rope with him. Whenever he threw the rope over, it messed up somehow and he couldn't get down. And so he was up there for like six days. For real? Yep. Where was his family? I don't Nobody know. Knew he was up yeah, there. they knew they knew he was up there. So like media got involved, everybody knew he was involved. Oh my goodness. And then they were trying to figure out how to get him down. And so they had to send climbers up after him to get him down. So something I didn't know about Devil's Tower is that it's a very sacred place to the Native American tribes. There's I think there's like seven of them that consider this a very sacred place. And even today, there are prayer cloths all around Devil's Tower. And also something that's really neat is that even though this is a national monument, that these tribes, these Indian tribes, they still play a role in the management and protection of this national park. So that's a really cool thing that uh, they can work together in preserving this uh, incredible, beautiful landmark. Also something really interesting is the controversy over the name Devil's Tower. The Indians actually call it Bear's Teepee, which is Bear's Lodge. That was actually the original name for it. But I don't remember who, what the guy's name was, but he wrote an article and said something in there about how an Indian had called it Bad God's Tower. And so then it, Devil's Tower was formed from that. People started calling it Devil's Tower more than they started calling it Bear's Lodge. And at some point it got changed to Devil's Tower. Although the Indian tribes would like to have it turned back to Bear's Lodge. So some controversy there on that. They're still lobbying for that today, I believe, to try and get that changed. So what do you guys think? Devil's Tower or Bear's Lodge do you like better? I never did like the name Devil's Tower, but especially if it's a sacred place. It, to me, it shouldn't be called that. But yeah, Bear's Teepee. It looks like an Indian teepee, don't it? And that's how the Indians came up with, with Bear's Lodge. Since this land was so sacred to the Native Americans, and like I said, you see all these prayer cloths everywhere, I think uh, they should be honored by naming it. That's my opinion. Back in the day, cowboys. So a little tip for the trail. It's a paved trail that goes all the way around the tower. It is 1.3 miles. And I would suggest from the visitor center to start and go right. Because if you start and go left, you're gonna have a little bit of uphill and it's gonna be a little bit uh, more exhausting as opposed to going on the right side and going around the tower. Now all we have is just downhill. I've seen several people stopped along the way, catching their breath, coming uphill this way. So just wanna save you a little bit of exhaustion. Although if you want the exercise, go for it, turn left. But if you want it easy, go right. So that sign back there said there actually is animals up on top of the tower. Seriously? Yep, like uh, there's mice, it's like small animals and they said there's actually even some snake that's been up there seen mm. and then it's a grassy area i figured it would actually be just a flat rock surface but they said it's like a grassy rounded mound and there's little animals up there so, so it's like a baseball field that's, they said it's the size of a football field actually wow must have not been bad for that guy yeah yeah so he had the size of a football field area to land on. Yeah. But back in those days, that had never been done before. He was like the first one to do it. Are there any trees up 